One of Greece's worst ever rail disasters, which claimed at least 43 lives, was due to tragic human error, the country's prime minister has said. PM Kyriakos Mitsotakis spoke after visiting the site of Tuesday night's head on collision between a passenger service and a freight train. The local station master has been, char has been charged with manslaughter. The Greek transport minister has resigned. Rescue teams are continuing to search for survivors. The accident happened just before midnight on Tuesday. The passenger train carrying some 350 people collided with a freight train as it emerged from a tunnel after leaving the town of Larissa. It is still unclear why the two services were running on the same track. The station master, who is in charge of signaling, denies wrongdoing and has blamed the accident on a possible technical failure. The leaders of China and Belarus have expressed their extreme interest in a peaceful resolution in Ukraine. Chinese President and Belarus leader Alexander Lukashenko, a close ally of Russia's Vladimir Putin, issued the statement after talks in Beijing. Mr. Lukashenko said his country fully supports a Beijing planning plan for ending the war in Ukraine. China announced a plan for peace talks last week, calling for the respect of national sovereignty. The visit comes days after China sent its top diplomat Wang Yi to meet Mr. Putin. Mr. Lukashenko and Mr. Xi's meeting also coincided with a visit by U.S. Secretary, Secretary of State Antony Blinken to Central Asian nations to discuss the Ukraine war. Help me, I am being tortured by my employer, Marion's Kabu wrote. I'm covered in blood every day, help me. She then quickly folded the note and threw it out of the locked iron gates of the apartment in the suburbs of Kuala Lumpur where she was working as a live-in maid. A woman passing by picked it up. Once she read it, she immediately took it to a retired police officer who lived in the same flats. If she had stayed there, she surely would have died, he later said. That same day, the 20th of December 2014, Malaysian police knocked on the door of the apartment where Marion's lived. She hadn't left it in eight months. Eight months. I felt like I was falling, she says, recalling the moment when she saw the officers. More than three years after COVID-19 was detected in the Chinese city of Wuhan, the question of how the virus first emerged remains a mystery. 
But on the 28th of February 2023, the controversial claim that the pandemic might have leaked from a Chinese laboratory, once dismissed by many as a fringe conspiracy theory, resurfaced, resurfaced with FBI Director Christopher Wray's comments that the Bureau believes COVID-19, most likely, originated in a Chinese government-controlled lab. It is the first public confirmation of the FBI's classified judgment of how the pandemic virus emerged. In response, Beijing accused Washington of political manipulation. Two of the three Republicans who have announced plans so far to enter the U.S. presidential race are Indian Americans. While Nikki Haley is a familiar name, surprise candidate Vivek Ramaswamy is much less well-known. California-based journalist Savita Patel assesses his chances and whether he could bring change. Mr. Ramaswamy, a multimillionaire entrepreneur and author of the book Woke, Inc., announced his presidential bid on the 21st of February with an appearance on a Fox News show and a video laying out his political views. He wants to launch a cultural movement to create a new American dream, based on the pursuit of excellence, and he says, diversity is meaningless if there's nothing greater that binds people. Dozens of girls from 26 schools in Iran are reportedly being treated for poisoning at hospitals after another wave of apparent toxic gas attacks. More than 1,000 students have been affected since November. They have suffered respiratory problems, nausea, dizziness, and fatigue. Many Iranians suspect the poisonings are, poisonings are a deliberate attempt to force girls' schools to close. But the government has not said whether it believes they are premeditated. Interior Minister Ahmad Vahidi, who has been tasked by the president with finding the root cause of the poisonings, on Wednesday dismissed as false a report by FAS News Agency that three, pe three people had been arrested. Sake is gathering new fans all over the world, but back in its home market, the Japanese are losing interest. Janki Ito says there are a number of factors behind the continuing decline in sake sales in the drink's home market. Sake's consumption in Japan has dropped significantly due to an increasing variety of choice of alcohol, of alcohol as well as the westernization of consumer culture. A Japanese expat, Mr. Ito is the founder of Tipsisake, a U.S. website that focuses on importing and selling the alcoholic drink, which is made from fermenting rice soaked in water. 
He adds that the reputation of sake in its home country has been tarnished by cheaper, low-quality versions, with lots of additives that caused hangovers. Journalists have been forced to temporarily take down articles critical of powerful oil lobbyists due to the exploitation of U.S. copyright law, according to a new report. At least five such articles have been subject to fake copyright claims, including one by the respected South African newspaper Mail and Guardian, according to the Organized Crime, Organized Crime and Corruption Reporting Project, OCCRP. The claims, which falsely assert ownership of the stories, have been made by mystery individuals under the U.S. Digital Millennium Copyright Act, DMCA, a law meant to protect copyright holders. Just last month, three separate false copyright claims were made against Diario Rome, an investigative news outlet that focuses on Equatorial Guinea. More than half of Argentina has been left without power after a fire affected the national electricity grid. The capital, Buenos Aires, other major cities and large swaths of the countryside are wholly or partly affected. The fire reportedly started in open fields, affecting crucial power lines in the coastal zone and putting a nuclear power station offline. The blackout comes in the middle of a heat wave and drought in Argentina. With the South American nation still in its summer months, temperatures are consistently above 35 C in some parts of the country. The sweltering conditions coupled with the power outage have brought daily life to a halt in some, some regions, with classes suspended and businesses closed. Many are also having to go without air conditioning or refrigeration. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex have been asked to vacate their British base of Frogmore Cottage, the couple's spokesperson has confirmed. It was earlier reported that the home, in the grounds of Windsor Castle, had been offered to the Duke of York. A spokesperson for Prince Harry and Meghan confirmed the news. Buckingham Palace has not, com not commented. The Duke and Duchess now live in California with their two children, Archie and Lilibet. They quit life as working royals in 2020 and left the UK shortly afterwards. Frogmore Cottage, a grade 2 listed 10 bedroom property in the grounds of Windsor Castle in Berkshire, was a gift to the royal cu to the royal couple from the late queen.
A Jack Daniels building project is to be halted after a neighbor argued she was facing a plague of whiskey fungus caused by escaping alcohol vapors. Christy Long, of Lincoln County, Tennessee, claimed her property was coated in the fungus, which appears as a black crust on surfaces. It is a growing issue for people in the area. The fungus, which consumes ethanol fumes, grows on surfaces near bakeries and distilleries around the world. Mrs. Long, who runs an events venue next to several Jack Daniels warehouses, including one under construction, says the invading fungus has required her to spend thousands on power washing. She is suing the local county zoning office, arguing it did not properly approve permits for the warehouses. Drug giant Eli Lilly has announced a $35.30 pounds cap on the monthly costs patients face for insulin in the U.S., responding to outcry over the soaring cost of the diabetes medication. More than 8 million Americans use insulin to control their diabetes, the American Diabetes Association says. says. Last year, the U.S. passed a law capping monthly costs at $35 for people with certain government health insurance. But for many people with private insurance, the costs remain much higher. Eli Lilly said it would institute the cap on out-of-pocket costs for Lilly insulin users immediately as it prepared to cut the list price of two of its most commonly prescribed insulins, Humalog and Humalin, by 70% by the end of the year. Back in 2012, Michael Scavarla was running to a Walmart in Arkansas for milk when he spotted a huge insect on the side of the building. Its wingspan was nearly two inches across. Mr. Scavarla studies insects, so he took it home and forgot about it. But in 2020, he showed it to his students in class. They realized it was something far more rare than expected, a giant lacewing. He'd found a bug that hasn't been seen in eastern North America for 50 years. We all realized together that the insect was not what it was labeled, said Cody Mathis, one of Mr. Scavarla's entomology students at Penn State. Penn State. Mr. Scavarla, now director of Penn State University's Insect Identification Lab, recently co-authored a paper about the discovery made when he showed the bug to students in an online class. It's been about four years since we have been back here in Hong Kong and I must say, we have missed you guys so much. 
The statement from Blackpink's Rosé to the 14,000 fans packing out Asia World Arena is greeted by rapturous cheers. The K-pop superstars, Jisoo, Jenny, Rosé and Lisa, have been, on, have been on their Born Pink World Tour since October. Fan Charlotte Hofstetter didn't hesitate to travel from Singapore to Bangkok, Thailand in January to catch them on stage. When pandemic restrictions were in place, Charlotte followed updates about the band on social media and even attended one of the group's virtual concerts. I was excited for live concerts. It was the first stop in the Asian leg of their tour in Lisa's hometown, so it was a special place to be. The medieval chair used in the coronation of monarchs is undergoing conservation work, in order to be ready for the crowning of King Charles III. The 700-year-old oak chair is described as extremely fragile by conservation experts at Westminster Abbey. The painstaking preservation work is intended to clean the chair and stabilize layers of flaking gilding. It's part of the preparations for the coronation ceremony to be held at the Abbey in London on the 6th of May. The historic coronation chair, a centerpiece of the ceremony for centuries, is a unique work of art, says conservator Krista Blesley. It was made on the orders of Edward I, who reigned from 1272 to 1307, and it has been used in almost every coronation ceremony since then.